section 6.1 is going to cover the area between two curves. So in problem number 6 here, we've got the area between y equals x and y equals sine of x. And we're not doing that for the entire uh, curve between these things. You can see that sine would continue here and that y equals x would continue like this. But we're actually limiting it between, say, pi over 2 and pi. So we want to find this area. Now the way I'm going to approach this is we're going to try and take a little bit of a slice. And we're going to work by finding the area of a little rectangle. So I'll draw myself a little slice. And let's... Now this slice is going to be approximately the area between the two curves for this little piece. Now, how do you find the area of that little rectangle in general terms? Length times width, or width times height, you know, whatever dimensions you want to assign to it, to the names. But yeah, this direction versus this direction. Now, the width, I'm going to call that dx. That's how wide it is. And the height, well, the height is top minus bottom, so we want the area of one rectangle. So area is going to be the height times dx. So then the question is, well, all right, well, what's the height? Hmm. Well, the height is going to be the top minus the bottom. The height of uh, the function up here minus the height of the function up there. So h equals top minus bottom. Later on, if we're trying to find kind of a width, you know, if we did a slice in the dy direction, we do right minus left. But right now it's top minus bottom. Because this is going to be defined in terms of x, I know that because of the width of this is the dx, then I want to try and find the height in terms of x's. So in terms of the x, x is, it's going to be x minus sine of x so equals x minus sine of x. Okay. Let's put that together with what I have up above, right up there, and get our overall expression for the area of this one rectangle. So the area equals x minus sine of x times dx. And that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. I want the area of that one rectangle. So hopefully we're all in agreement here. Now, when Leibniz chose this symbol for his integral, he was choosing it because it represented the word, or this represented kind of an elongated S in summa, which means to add. In order to find the area of this, <clears throat> you had to add up the area of all kinds of little rectangles, starting here all the way to here. And then make those rectangles really, really small. Now we're going to kind of wave our hands at this a little bit. But really, it looks like this. We found the area of one rectangle. But then we've got to find the area of all these rectangles. We've got to add it up. And that turns into a sum. And then we take the limit of the sum as the number of rectangles gets really, really big, tends to infinity, then this becomes an integral. And that's what we have down here. So the area bounded between A and B and between F of X and G of X, that's going to be our area. So it's the area trapped between two curves. And for us in this particular problem, it's going to be the integral from pi over 2 to pi of x minus sine of x dx. So we're kind of, you know, passing over and not really doing much with that limit process. But this comes about as a result of a limit. Nice. So we've got a nice little definite integral. What do I do to find the definite integral here? How do I evaluate this? Uh, 
Good, but what what gets evaluated at pi and pi over two? Good, the antiderivative. So what's the antiderivative for x? X squared over two, and then for minus sine of x, it'll be cosine of x. Good, between pi over two and pi. Nice. So let's drop these into our function and see what we get. So that's going to be pi squared over 2 plus cosine of pi minus pi squared over 2 squared, or pi over 2 squared over 2 uh, figures. Uh, Try again. Pi over 2 squared over 2 minus cosine or plus cosine of pi over 2. Okay, so let's see here. A couple of these will simplify a little bit. That's negative 1. How about cosine of pi over 2? 0. So we're left with pi squared over 2 minus pi squared over 8 minus 1. So it's going to be 3 pi over 8 minus 1. Okay. And that's it. That's the area of the, our area between these two curves between pi over 2 and pi. How are we looking at the first example? Now, just to give you kind of a heads up here, the reason that I'm taking this slice here as part of our calculation is because I'm really laying the groundwork for stuff we're going to do in section 6.2. So this is going to dovetail nicely. It's going to get you into the flow of what we're going to do when we start trying to find volumes, not just areas, but volumes of solids of revolution. But unless there's some more questions or thoughts on that one, let me turn on to problem number 16. Okay. You should have a Desmos link for this as well. So you can kind of look at some of these pictures on Desmos if you want. I'm not sure it really matters much to us in this case. But here's our two curves in problem 16, cosine of x and 2 minus cosine of x. We want the area between those, so this is your part. Ready? Ooh, ah. Uh, all right. Pretty nice. Thank you. Let's see if we can't find that area. Kind of like the last one. We're going to find this by drawing a little slice between these two curves. So there. thickness of that slice is dx. And let's see, the bottom function, that would be your cosine of x, y equals cosine of x. Top function is going to be y equals 2 minus cosine of x. Like that. Okay. So let's set this up. We want to try and find the area of one rectangle. Area of one rectangle. So the area is going to be the height times the width. The width is just what? dx. And the height is going to be the top minus the bottom. So it's going to be 2 minus cosine of x minus cosine of x again. And you might want to simplify that. Instead of minus cosine, minus cosine, what should I write? Minus 2 cosine. Put that all together for our area. Area equals 2 minus 2 cosine of x times dx.
Okay. Not so bad there. Now that's the area of just that one slice, but I need to find the area of the entire region between these two points. By the way, what is this point out here? Any guesses? Yeah, so we have zero, and they meet out here again at two pi. So you can kind of see that if you played around with the graph and traced it a little bit. Follow all the way out to here, and you'll see it. these two meet at 2 pi and 1. So, okay, that's nice. Let's get back to our calculation. This is the area of one rectangle. We have to include the area of all such rectangles. And all such rectangles could start here. We could have one right at 0 all the way over to pi over 2. And that's how you get your limit of integration, is you try and figure out well, where could I draw those rectangles and it still be part of this area? So, from 0 to 2 pi of 2 minus 2 cosine of x dx. So, I need an antiderivative here. All right, so 2x, 2x, it'd be plus 2 sine x, right? No, yeah, it would be the minus. I'm, all right, yeah, it would be the minus there. So minus 2 sine of x, and let's see, where's my Photoshop? There we go, minus. minus 2 sine of x between 0 and 2 pi. That works out pretty nice because sine at 0 and at 2 pi is equal to what? 0. So we're going to get 2 times 2 pi minus sine of 2 pi minus 2 times 0 minus sine of 0. So that second term all together just zero. Yeah, this whole thing disappears. That's zero. As does this. So, yep, just four pi for the area. Nice. So, the same thing's going to happen for all of these types of things. So you're going to have to find the area. Now sometimes, and we'll get to some of these problems um, maybe a little bit later. Go back and take a look at problem number four. But we're going to look at top minus bottom. If we had to take a dy slice, then it's going to be right minus left. But this one worked out pretty nice for top minus bottom. Any questions or thoughts on problem number 16 here? You guys ready to try one? Problem number 18? Okay, let me give you the functions here. So the functions are y equals the square root of x minus 1 and x minus 1 equals y. Um, let me see, what am I with that? x minus y. x minus 1? No, x minus y equals 1. x minus y equals 1. There you go. So there's your two functions. Take a little slice here. Calculate the area of that slice.
you, your units are no longer the same. Remember last week when we did review substitutions, we convert to you, and then um, we don't convert back. Okay, so let's look at this one. I want the area of one rectangle. The area of one rectangle is going to be the height times the width. So the height is top minus bottom. That's going to be square root of x minus 1. And when I solve for y here, I get x minus 1 equals y. So it'll be top minus bottom. And notice you have to put that in parentheses. What was the width? Width is dx. So the area is really square root of x minus 1 minus parentheses x minus 1 dx. That's the area of one rectangle. Now, I'm walking around, I know this is new for us, but try and get in a habit, and I'd appreciate it, it helps me out, of writing an integral as part of your work here. So it's going to be the integral of square root of x minus 1 minus x minus 1 dx. Now what about the limits? Where are they going to be? What are those going to be? Between 1 and 2. Because those are where you can take your slices and still be in that region. So 1 to 2. Now a lot of you are tempted and really want to distribute that negative. That's fine. But if you hold off, you can make yourself, make your life a little bit easier. Because we're going to do this one with a u substitution. That way we can integrate the square root of x minus 1. That would mean u equals x minus 1. And let's change our limits of integration. That way we don't have to work back. So u of 2 would be 2 minus 1, which is 1. And u of 1 would be 0. So when we do our substitution, we can change our limits and then just be done. We won't have to go back to units of x at all. There's one other thing I need here. I need the derivative. In this case, du by dx equals 1. So in other words, du equals dx. So that's a good thing. When du by dx equals 1, then you can almost integrate that the way you would have before we learned to use substitution. Just add 1 to the exponent and divide by the same exponent. All right. Let's pull that all together. Our new integral looks like this. The integral from 0 to 1 of the square root of u, which I'll write as u to the 1 half, minus u du. Okay, well, I need an antiderivative here. I'm done with x's because we changed our limits of integration, so we're done with x's. And notice that I had u plugged in twice, right? Once here, once here. And that's okay. Worked out pretty nice. I'll get x to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves minus u squared over 2 between 0 and 1. If you want to clean that up and write that as 2 thirds u to the 3 halves minus 1 half u to the second between 0 and 1, that's fine. So 
So I end up with 2 thirds times 1 minus plugging in the 1 here gets you know, 1 half. And when I plug in 0, I get 0. So 2 thirds minus 1 half gives me 1 sixth. So not surprising there. You expected something kind of small, right? I mean, the area of this little square here, 1 by 1, is 1. You should expect something less than 1, and we got it. Whew. Okay, how are we looking on that one? Yeah, Brandon. Oh, absolutely. So, well, I mean, I guess guess the, the tricky part is how you deal with the integral of the x minus 1. So I was talking to Andrew about this just a minute ago. If du equals dx, then you can kind of integrate it like you would think. So, I mean, I'm somehow I'm a little nervous about sharing that detail, but you can. That's actually something I encourage in Calc 2 when you need to do a lot of these things uh, and you need to be able to do it efficiently. So if du equals dx, or du by dx equals 1, you can kind of integrate it just the way you would think. So what do we do? We added 1 to the exponent and divided by the same exponent. So that's what you would do. Yeah. And then you can work it in x uh, without changing the limits of integration. Eureka? Oh, because we, we changed over from integrating with respect to x to integrating with respect to u. So it's a different variable. So it changes your limits of integration when you make that change. Well, it's 0 to 1 because when you, when you go to your u substitution here, here was our u substitution, u equals x minus 1. So I can take my limits from x, which were 2 and 1, and if I plug in 2 and 1 for x into this expression, I get my new limits. So 2 minus 1 gave me the 1. That's my upper limit. And then 1 minus 1 gave me 0. So I went from these two limits here and here to these two here and here, because those are in u. All right. Appreciate the question. Anything else on this one that might be a little bit troubling? Okay, let's look at problem number 22. 22 has got something that's going to be a little bit challenging for us, and we'll see how we deal with it. <clears throat> yeah, question? Go ahead. Can you give me the answer? No, it's not going to be zero. There's definitely an area between these two, right? Yeah, but isn't it positive and negative? Well... No, it's not positive and negative. It's it's this area plus this area. Yeah, if if this, you're what you're thinking of. Let me see if I got an extra one here. Um, if you were just finding the area between the x-axis and a curve, um, so here, here. So if you're trying to find this area and this area. Then, yeah, then it would be zero if you integrated, say, this function, which I think is uh, y equals x cubed. If you're integrating y equals x cubed from negative 1 to 1, you'd be finding this area plus this area, and you would get zero. That'd be your odd function rule. So, yeah, that'd be a problem. But that's not what we're trying to find. We're trying to find an area between here and here. Now, you are right. We do have to look out for something. Let's take a look here. How have we started out all our problems so far in this section? We've done three. What have we done first? Take a slice. Take a slice. Take a slice. Find, the, find the area of that slice. So let's do that here. Let's find this area. So that little area. Ah, good question. Are we going to take two slices? Well, we might need to. We're going to have to do something, right? Because what's what's going to happen here? 
area of one slice, uh, area equals the height times the width. So the height is going to be top minus bottom. And I should probably write the functions down now. This is y equals x, and this is y equals x cubed. So there you go, bingo. So the height is going to be top minus bottom, which is going to be x minus x cubed times the width, which is dx. But that's the expression here, right? That's the expression in the interval 0 to 1. What happens if, uh, what changes if I did it here? Yeah. So the problem with doing it here is that my top and bottom function have interchanged. So the area of this region would be calculated differently than the area of this one because your top and function. There's two things that we can do. One of them is we could calculate two integrals. We could do this one and then do this one. What do you think is another trick that we can do here? Multiply what? Yeah, you can just yeah, just find the area of this one and multiply by two, right? Now, if you didn't adjust for that, if you just said, oh, well, that's going to be the integral from negative one to one of this minus this cubed, you know, x minus x cubed, that's when you get zero. You get zero, and you look back at that. And I really hope that you go, wait a minute, I shouldn't be getting zero when I'm trying to find this area. So, no, it's a, it's a great question and observation, so I appreciate that. But let's just find this, this area here, and then we'll double it. So it's going to be, area is going to be x minus x cubed times dx. We want to integrate that between 0 and 1 x minus x cubed, dx, and then we're going to double that result. So that's going to be twice 0 to 1 of x squared over 2 minus x to the 4th over 4. So 2 times 1 half minus 1 fourth minus zero, that's going to be one half. Okay. Now, if you, if you didn't want to do it as two separate integral, or, yeah, as doubling this integral, you could set it up as two separate integrals, and it would look like this. You would integrate from negative 1 to 0 of x cubed minus x dx. And then you would add the integral from 0 to 1 of x minus x cubed dx. And you get it the area that way. The one thing you can't do is if you integrated from negative 1 to 1 of x minus x cubed dx, that would give you 0. And I really hope that you would see that, wait a minute, there's a problem with that. You're not going to get 0 when you do a problem like this, or at least you shouldn't get 0. No, this is, this is already distributed into 2. If you distributed the two, you'd get one half minus or one minus one half. What should be so? Yeah, but no, I appreciate the question. It's all right. No, no, no. I I didn't do all the steps. My bad. <laughs> okay. Anything else on problem number twenty-two here?
Now this is actually kind of a good one as a warm up for problem number 28. Now let's see if we can't plug in all our functions here. I've got, let's see, this one is y equals 2x squared. This one is y equals 1 quarter x squared. And this is x plus y equals 3. What's going to be challenging about this one? Three curves. Well, it's got three curves. There's something else that's going to be challenging for us. Yeah, your, your top and bottom functions are going to change, right? Effectively, you've got to do this with two different areas. You've got, call it area one here and area two here. And way out someplace, way, way far to the right would be area 51, but we can't go there. All right. Boom, boom. All right. <laughs> All right. So let's, let's see about it. We're going to have to do this in two pieces then. We'll start out with this one right here. We'll take a slice that way. And we'll also take a slice here. So again, what's going to change is the top function. The top function is not going to be the same in each of these. So we'll have to calculate it with two areas. So see if you can't set up the integral for both these areas. Yeah, you certainly can simplify the uh, the integrand, the expression. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't integrate them separately if, if that's what you're asking. Mm
close to that first integral, you can combine the like terms. 2x squared minus 1 quarter x squared, that's 7 quarters x squared. So there's nothing wrong with combining like terms in that first one to make your integrand simpler. You'll get the right answer either way. Okay, so for this first one, the height would be 2x squared minus 1 quarter x squared. And because these are like terms, we can simplify that. Think of that as 8 over 4 minus 1 over 4. They're both x squared terms, so I get 7 quarters x squared. Nothing wrong with doing that right away. The width is just the, the width of the slice, so that's dx. So overall, the area is 7 quarters x squared dx. And when we integrate that, 0 to, well, how far do we go? 0 to 1, because that's where this changes. Is that x equal 1? So 0 to 1, 7 quarters x squared dx. And when you find the antiderivative here, it's going to be 7 over 4. And a couple of you got this wrong, so take your time a little bit when you do this. You know, worry, you know, move the 7 quarters out of the picture. When you integrate x squared, it's going to be x cubed over 3. A couple of you accidentally found the 3 up in the numerator instead of in the denominator, between 0 and 1. And that's going to end up giving us 7 over 12 when we integrate that. So that's the first part, 7 over 12. We're okay with uh, the first one. Let's try the second one. For the second one, you got to move this around a little bit. We're going to move the x to the other side and get y equals 3 minus x. So the height is going to be top minus bottom. In this case, it's going to be 3 minus x minus 1 quarter x squared, like that. The width, as before, and this has been typical for us, is going to be dx. So the width is dx. And the overall area is going to be 3 minus x minus 1 quarter x squared dx. Okay, not looking bad there. Let's, uh, let's see here. Let's keep going. To find this area... I need not just the area of the one rectangle, but the area of all such rectangles. And those go between 1 and what else? Yeah, between 1 and 2. This slice in this region, A2, can happen anywhere between 1 and 2. So the integral from 1 to 2 of 3 minus x minus 1 quarter x squared dx. We okay with this one? So that's going to be, let's just cut to the happy ending, 11 twelfths. What's that? I cut through all your calculations? Hey, that's because I'm good. <laughs> all right. Finally, area 1 plus area 2 is 7 twelfths plus 11 twelfths. 
And doesn't this work out nice and special? Three halves. Okay. How many got that one? No, not, not the close. Did you at least get the first half of it? Hope got it? Sort of? Sort of. All right. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, if you're, if you're curious about the work that I skipped, it'd be 3x minus x squared over 2 minus 1 twelfth x cubed evaluated between 1 and 2, which would mean that you need to take, uh, plug in the 2, so it'd be 6 minus 4 over 2 minus 8 over 2, or 8 over 12, 8 over 12, minus 3 minus 1 half minus 1 twelfth. And let me make a suggestion for you. If you've got a mess like this, don't spend a lot of time on your test getting common denominators and all that crap. You spend 100 bucks or so on this calculator. Get your money's worth out of it. Just type it in exactly. 6 minus, well, maybe if you want to simplify that in your head, that's fine. Right? That's just 2. So 6 minus 2 minus 2 thirds, if you want to simplify something, minus parentheses, 3 minus 0 0.5 minus 1 divided by 12. And then you hit the answer to fraction key, and bam, 11 twelfths. So don't get this wrong because you make an arithmetic mistake at the end. Just don't. All right. Um, you can do it that way. So um, if if we're talking about this the, that way, um, here, here's what you can do. It might make it even easier. Is Let's take our antiderivative and plug it into our calculator. And I want some feedback from you on this one. So if I could have your attention on this, it would be great. So 3x minus x squared divided by 2 minus, I'll call that x cubed, and you got to exit the exponent here, divided by 12. And now what? Now I need to evaluate this at 1 and 2. So, man, there's a lot of ways we can do this, but let's just go to the table, second table. Uh, let's try it again. Second table. And let me delete all these values here. I'll plug in 2 for x. Or, you know, excuse me, try 2 and 1. So, so I get 3 and 1 third. That's 10 thirds. This one, eh, I don't recognize that one too much. That one's... Um, Two and five twelfths, maybe. So, yeah, it didn't work out nice and helpful there. Um, I don't know. Uh, there, there is, there is actually, if you take x and let's see, we take uh, one and store it in x, then we could look at the value of our function. If you do y one, there you go. That's that value that I had just a minute ago. And do answer to fraction, 29 twelfths. So if you're really determined, you can get your calculator to give that for you. So to do that again, if I wanted the upper limit, I'll take 2 and store it in X. And then type VARS. That's this key right here. And then to the right, the function. Press Enter twice. Y1 now is 10 thirds. So there you go. All right, so more than you wanted to know about your calculator, but uh, you can get these values out of your calculator. All right, I think it's time for the last one of these, and that's going to be problem number four. And really, of all the problems that I sent you on Desmos, I probably should have sent you this one. I'm not sure if it's on Desmos here or not. Uh, no. <laughs> so let's add it. <laughs> Add it. Uh, let's see. So 
we've got a couple different functions. We've got y equals 4 minus, or excuse me, 4y squared minus 4y. Excuse me. Try again. y squared minus 4y. In fact, you know what? I guess the reason I didn't put it on decimals is because it's already graphed for us here. Problem number four. So this one would be a real challenging one to do if we were determined to do this by taking a dx slice. That's because, in part, right here, for instance, you'd be taking a slice from a function to itself. It would be really difficult to do the top minus the bottom here. Likewise, over here, top minus bottom, well, it's the same function. So the trick is not to do it that way. The trick is to take a slice in this direction. So I'll take a slice horizontally like this. Yeah, that's a dy slice, right? Because that's the thickness of that slice. It's no longer taken in the x direction. It's taken parallel to the x-axis, which makes it a dy slice. We're still going to try and find the area of that one rectangle. So the height of it is dy, but the width, well, you might have remembered that earlier I said, you know, you're going to do top minus bottom or right minus left. And this is where we got to do right minus left. So I want to take this curve, which is your 2y minus y squared, and subtract this curve, which is your y squared minus 4y. And that's going to be the width of this. So let's see if we can't figure out the area of this one rectangle. So this is problem number four. Area of one rectangle. Well, we're going to have to go back and take a look at the limits. You're right. So area equals the width times the height. So the width is going to be 2y minus y squared minus y squared minus 4y. And as we did with our previous problem, there's nothing wrong with simplifying this a little bit. So let me distribute the negative 2y minus y squared minus y squared plus 4y. And that's going to simplify as 6y minus 2y squared. Now the height in this one is just dy. What's nice is that these two things go together. Both, you know, you've got everything defined in terms of y. You shouldn't have things mixed up. You shouldn't have a dx slice with variables in y or a dy slice with variables in x. These should match. So overall, the area of that one slice is 6y minus 2y squared dy. Let's find the integral now. So that's going to be the integral of 6y minus 2y squared dy. But Courtney was exactly right. He's like, well, wait a minute. What are we going to do for the limits of integration? Let's look back at the diagram given to us by the book. Well, you've got to be careful. We're taking a dy slice. So what's the lowest that this slice can be taken and still be in this region. In terms of the y direction, it's zero, right? Because you're getting down here to the origin, which has a y coordinate of zero. Then on the top side of things, we're going to go up to y equals three.
Oh, okay. So zero to three for our limits of integration. Now this is kind of a, a trivial problem, I hope, that you're getting pretty used to the antiderivative stuff at this point. So let me remind you of another thing you can do with your graphing calculators. We can finish this off with fn int. So let's find find that. If you hit the math key, then 9. So math 9, 0 to 3. And I, just out of convenience, I'm going to use x's as opposed to y's. You can do a y if you were really determined. You'd hit the alpha key and then the 1. That would give you a y, but let's just do it with x's. 6x minus 2x squared dx. So you got to make sure that those match. And bam, nice even 9. So, cool. How are we looking on that one? Yeah, I, I did it with fn int. I didn't didn't actually show out all this work. How? You can always check your answers with this. Absolutely. So, for instance, back here, if, if I if I was looking at this and like Courtney was like, "Are you sure that's one half earlier?" Hey, you could check that with integration. So, I could put a two out in front, math. 9 from 0 to 1 of what was it? It was x minus x cubed, right? x minus x cubed dx 0.5. So, and it's just, a, I know, but there are going to be some problems for which I'm going to say, look, I want to see the work. All right. And keep in mind that sometimes your answers are going to be irrational numbers, and you're not going to be able to get a nice exact closed form. I mean, you might end up with something like the square root of pi, and the best your calculator will do is give you a decimal approximation. So you still have to know how to do this stuff, and I still am going to ask you to show some of your work. But on the test, I'm sure there will be problems where I say, finish it with fn int. And if I don't say finish it with fn int, at least check yourself with fn int, because then you can be sure that you got it right before you hand in the test. And that makes us both happy. Anything else on this one? Okay. For homework. Number three. I'm not so sure about number three, but um, the bulk of the homework is going to be 5 through 27. I'll tell you what, since you got a test coming up. We'll just make that the odds, okay? All right. Good deal.